Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. Hey, everybody. This week's question is uh, Halloween related. Um, there are three parts to this uh, question. Um, the first question, uh, which I'll tell you now, and I'll save the question two and three for the, the next round. Um, the first question is, what is your favorite Halloween candy? And I will say that I am a dark chocolate aficionado. So pretty much anything dark chocolate is in my wheelhouse. Um, right now, my favorite dark chocolate candy is, um, and I just this year saw them uh, for sale, as um, Reese's uh, Thins peanut butter cups made with dark chocolate. They come in a little bag. Um, the unusual thing about them is they, they come in individual packages, but they don't have that, that sort of paper cup that goes around the regular Reese's cups. Mm. They just, you open up that pack and you're right in there. So uh, Reese's Thins dark chocolate peanut butter cups. That's my favorite right now. Reese's ribbed for her pleasure. That's right. Um, and also once you try, try dark chocolate, you never go back. Um, okay. Um, so my favorite Halloween candy, despite being obsessed with Halloween, I mean, I wake up like, you know, leading up to Halloween, I'll wake, I'll wake up in like August going, is it Halloween yet? Um, I, I love Halloween. I think about it all the time. I'm glad I moved to Philly, which is a city. Old Philly is obsessed with Halloween. Philly for Philly, not Philly for New York. Philly for New York doesn't care about Halloween. But I, I love Halloween. Uh, the people here love Halloween, but I don't like candy. I, I, I got, and think about it. That means I got to be this fat strictly through depression and anxiety. <laughs> so, thank you, brave patriots. Um, but the, uh, um, but Imagine so, if you also liked candy. Well, yeah. I mean, oh, my God. You wouldn't be able to get me in the room. I'd be like Marlon Brando in Apocalypse Now. The horror, <laughs> the horror. Um, so I'm, I'm not a candy person. Now, I do like candy from India. And I work with a bunch of people from India, a bunch of friends from India. They bring me candy from India. I love candy from India. That said, I'm an expert on Halloween candy. And that is because every year, pre-COVID, Vienna and I had a ritual where we would pick a, a Saturday before Halloween, and we would sit and we would put in horror movies, probably about six hours worth. And we would buy maybe $100 worth of candy, probably more. And we would put seven pieces in each bag. These are seven big pieces. So that when kids came around, they were really happy. They were like, oh, this place is great. I remember once we saw some kids complaining. We were, we were headed out and they were complaining because they, they couldn't find candy. And people weren't. And we're like, wait right here. And we came back and gave them a ton of it. Handing out candy is one of the, the, the greatest thrills in life. And I, I love it. Um, and uh, a quick nod to the late Dave Blood, who once bought uh, razor blades, apples, candy, and rat poison right around Halloween, um, and then wondered, came home and wondered why they were looking at him weird at the store. So I, I love the candy thing, and I once actually ran into um, a jerk who didn't like Halloween and didn't like handing out candy. He's like, I don't get the point. I can give my kids candy anytime. And I was going to say, well, Christmas, you can give your kids presents anytime just hoping he was going to say he would say like you know oh well you know that's jesus's birthday and i would say well halloween is the dark lord's birthday but i, I realized it was just probably better not to go there so i'm just saying uh people don't be stingy with halloween candy all right you know get a bunch of it and just enjoy if you got to sit out there with your friends and stuff and and have a few and hand out candy that's what you do but but it don't and don't buy that like cheap dollar store candy don't give them like oh here's some here's some sweet tarts that are like, like off mint. brand yeah like sweet tats or something sweat tarts no no buy the real brands of candy buy the reeses you know buy buy toblerones again whatever you have to give them but yeah kids kids deserve it's rough being a kid it sucks and they deserve the candy and now we will move on to i think uh joe is next i like candy corn and i have some and i also like nerds speaking of cheap candy it's actually not that cheap but uh, you can get it at the dollar store though um but i just found out this year that they make nerds candy corn and now this is my new favorite it combines the wonderful texture of candy corn <laughs> with the amazing extreme sour sweet flavor of nerds <laughs> Two things the flavor one. of nerds, but the shape 
and texture of the can. <laughs> Look at them. They're Was like, that in the epicac section? <laughs> 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 yeah. They might be a little bit over engineered because each one has different colors inside, but who is going to take the time to <laughs> actually open up one and see? Oh, wow, they're orange inside the purple ones, or they're green or yellow inside the red ones. I don't know. Wow. But they are really good. To me, anyway. You know, it- is candy corn like in the public domain, like the whole concept of it? Or does somebody um, this, this is Brock's. Lots of companies make it though. But I yeah, think yeah, so like, it's like, must be just like an open patent. Thing. I don't a know. A couple of years ago, I got um, Kisses, Hershey's Kisses candy corn flavor, and I, I love them. I didn't see them for sale this year. First of all, Native Americans called the candy maze, and they would <laughs> they would give it to the pilgrims just to watch the pilgrims get painful diarrhea. <laughs> it was not. It was, it was peyote too. <laughs> I'm a historical reenactor. But why is there a pilgrim hat within reach? Yeah, that's a good question, right there. Yeah, that's, that's a whole other episode. Okay. Joe, I also Two Blackmore like- left it. I Thank you, Rishi Black. I'm oh, sorry. Do you like candy corn? What? I'm not a big fan of candy corn. corn. I feel like people either like it or hate it. I like it. It's like wax lips. Remember wax lips? I don't, I don't, remember. don't even get me started. I'll they'll take up the rest of the time on wax lips. I've like talked to my kids about it and driven them crazy because I was like, are you supposed to eat it? I don't understand. It's wax. Uh, anyway, I I do like candy. I don't eat too much of it. And I've never had a cavity, but you know, I take care of my teeth. And I like chocolate, but I really think that my favorite is Smarties. And I based it on the fact that I could probably eat 40 or 50 of those little bags of Smarties and not even care. Hey. Um, and I'm not talking about Canadian Smarties because those are actually chocolate. They're like M&Ms. They are. Metric Smarties. Yeah. <laughs> Why do I like parties? I don't know. They're just they're called ro- these they, are called they rockets like, in Canada. They look like they could be pills or you can they crush them pills. and snort them. <laughs> Joe, did you I say think- Canadians are called rock people? They call these rockets in Canada. Oh. They make them in Ontario and in New Jersey. Yeah, the um Smarties over they they are like M&Ms. Um I don't know if they have an S on them which would be a funny practical joke because Skittles have an S and they are not chocolate and incidentally my my middle son does not like chocolate and never has and now I just realize that's a really good prank to play on him get Canadian <laughs> smarties <laughs> they're chocolate <laughs> okay Round two of our question this week is what is your favorite Halloween costume you wore either as a child or an adult. One of my favorites is as an adult. Um, well, let me start. I, when I was a kid, my mom used to make our Halloween costumes. We never bought those like store-bought costumes. Um, one year, it was so ridiculous. I went as a mummy and we just wrapped toilet paper around me. And <laughs> I mean, that's the classic. Um, but as an adult, I think one of my favorite things is, you know, the Milkmen have uh, played a bunch of Halloween shows and it's always a lot of fun to get dressed up for when we play. And one of my favorites is uh, from uh, 19, um, what was it, 2012, no, it was 2012, and we played, and I created a uh, Dalek costume for both my drum set and me, so I had the drum set surrounded in what looked like the outside of the bottom part of the Dalek, and I made myself a helmet that looked like a Dalek, and uh, we can show you a picture of that uh, right now and uh that i had fun putting that together and that's one of my favorite costumes that i put together as an adult honorable mention um well i'll maybe i'll I'll wait until the end of this round to mention the honorable mention rodney okay first of all i love the dolly it it was all around the drum kit it just it looked awesome it looked really good i was super impressed by that first of all i don't understand this costume as a child thing um one of the things i love best about my mother is not only does she not have a domestic bone in her body she doesn't have a domestic molecule in her body um so like my mom you know for a costume my mom would take like a jock strap and staple like a, a sock to each side and go here now you're that dog everybody loves you know <laughs> 
here's a broom handle. Now you're either Luke Skywalker or a Louisiana prison guard. Um, just, you know, she didn't do the costumes. And I thought that was weird because we have kids whose moms spent all year making these elaborate costumes. And then they would yell at them because they didn't trigger the little lighting thing at the right time. Like, I told you just as you're leaving them. So it, that, that always amused me. And I also actually wound up, we talked about a mummy costume. I wound up learning to sew and all that because, you know, my, my folks didn't do it. And, and so if I wanted a mummy costume, I made one out of bandages, out of mummy mask. And so just picture young Rodney with hair sewing that while, while young Tim Gunn stands in the background and goes, Rodney, I really like what you're doing with this mummy thing. I really, I think it has potential. Um, but my favorite costume of all time, when I was in my 20s uh, or, or early 30s, I forget what it was, I wandered into like a Halloween superstore and I found some devil horns. And I thought, oh, these are interesting. And I actually went and I'm like, what can I do? And so I went and I got now, folks, the devil horns deteriorated and you can't find them anymore. I've searched and searched and searched. But what I do have is the spirit gum that held them on and the little um, oh, watercolor set that I got. I went into a, um, I was like, what do I do? And I went into a, um, an art supply store and it has little watercolor sets. I'm like, oh, so I had painted the horns like with blacks and browns and some reds in there. And people were telling me, they're like, they just look like they grew out of your head. It mm -hmm. looked like, people would say, it looks like such a part of you. It's not really a costume. My wife found it very attractive. Um, and so um, I'm going to show a picture. This is me with the horns sitting my, next to my one of my nieces when she was young. We're at what we had in Philly used to be a Dracula Day Parade. Uh, the Rosenbach Museum uh, had a Dracula Day Parade because uh, it was uh, Bram Stoker was in Philadelphia when he came up with a big idea for Dracula and Again, it's just a weird, scary city. So we had a Dracula Day Parade. That was done by Spiral Q. And eventually uh, they, they were shut down by the government. Or And I think they're still around because they sued the government because the government thought that they were trying to interrupt the 2000 Republican Convention. It's a whole weird backstory with that. But that, that was there. And the famous thing, I was wearing the horns uh, when I was in a cab leaving Dracula's Ball uh, year, many years ago. Uh, and I, we were T-boned by a car. And the guy driving the cab turned around and went, I knew I should have never let the devil in my car. <laughs> so, yeah, I really, when you see me in the horns, I wish I could find more pictures of me. But I just, I love those horns. I, I would wear them every day if they'd held up. But, uh, yeah, they had a little meshing underneath. You put spirit gum. You had to make sure you got spirit gum remover. It'd be stuck to your head for life. My favorite costume was the NASA astronaut <laughs> costume spacesuit, <laughs> complete with a helmet. What age were I, you? I, yeah. I was like 50-something. Yeah, that was, <laughs> was at the truck, right? <laughs> I don't remember that one. There might I be remember that one, yeah. <laughs> Not very easy to play guitar with a helmet on. I didn't. I should have thought that out. But anyway, I don't. it doesn't matter. I don't know how Jimi Hendrix did it all those years. <laughs> he had a helmet on? Yeah. Oh. Wasn't well, his hair. That was, that was a helmet. <laughs> All right. That's it. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I have dressed up for Halloween every single year of my conscious life. Um, even if I didn't <clears throat> do anything. But I usually, you know, since I've had kids, I've like brought them out and dressed up in whatever. Even if it's just like put a wig on or something. I would go to school in, in high school on a day that if it was Halloween and dressed up. I was a dead milkman one time. I had a, a white hat, a white shirt, the white shirt that said Rodney. Do you remember that shirt? And then I put a bullet hole with blood coming down. It. This is pre-Columbine, so. Yeah, there's a, you have to talk to the counselor? <laughs> no, some people didn't really like it, but you know, it was the nineties. <laughs> um, but I think my favorite was, uh, the same year Dean was talking about for, for me was when I did the half man, half woman costume. Um, and, you know, it took some work. Chrissy helped me a lot. She, she sewed a shirt into a dress and pants into the dress and half a wig. I grew a mustache for a while and then shaved half of it. Um, and then I had to work the next day, which was funny. But that was also one of those days, one of those shows where like, took the kids out trick-or-treat we you know did a sound check trick-or-treating back to the show play you know we did that a couple of times i won't do that again <laughs> but um 
yeah i guess that i think that was my favorite because uh it just uh it felt appropriate i feel like i am half man half woman yeah. Well, I'll, just to, to wrap this <laughs> half, uh, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, part two up, um, Dan, I really loved your Bob Ross, and we have a picture of that, too, oh. we can flash on Oh, screen. yeah, I have a bunch one. of pictures, if I, I'll find them. In, yeah, um, yeah um, I thought he was the Unabomber. I didn't get it for a while. Yeah, Bob oh, Ross was great. Yeah. Um, no, okay, no, let's, a, let's move on Unabomber. to round three. Round right. three is, tell us a short, a very short Halloween story, preferably something that happened to you. Um, I'll tell two brief sh stories. One is, uh, you know, every family, I think, has some goofy phrases or catchphrases that develop over time. And one that I am teased about ever since I uttered it almost 30 years ago, we were at my uncle's house and their two uh, kids who are my nephews uh, were out trick-or-treating and they came back and they came back in the living room and they dumped their bags of candy onto the floor and there was a huge mound of candy. And I uttered without thinking, I haven't seen that much candy in a year. <laughs> and my sister looked at me and went, in a year. <laughs> and they have teased me ever since that moment uh, for 30 years. So we get things like, I haven't gotten that much sleep in a year. I haven't <laughs> seen them in a year. Every time something like that comes up, they always, 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 always tease me about it. I so that is my Herman saying that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's that. And I also want to touch on a great Halloween story that involves the dead milkman. We were on tour one time and I remember Rodney, you really wanted to see the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. And we were on an off day and we were driving South into Texas and we were not going to get to our hotel in time to see the great pumpkin broadcast on television. And so we got our tour manager, Dan Matt, to drive to a shopping mall. We parked the van, we went inside, we went to a department store, to the television section, and we turned on all the TVs <laughs> and we showed the great pumpkin the breath, and we watched it there and then we went on our way. <laughs> wow. You That's can't cool. miss it, yeah. All right, so uh, I have like a thousand great Halloween stories. I don't think I've ever had a ho an, an uneventful Halloween in my life. Uh, since I was young, something weird would always happen on Halloween. Uh, it's just, just the nature of my life. So it's hard to pick one of them uh, because literally, especially if you live in Philadelphia, you know, it's, you're going to have an interesting Halloween. So I'm going to go back to when I was young and I'm going to talk, tell you a story about uh, my friend, Mark Smith, AKA Smitty. Um, Smitty was my best friend growing up. Um, unfortunately, he passed away a few years back, uh, only at the age of 53, a heart issue. And, and took him out. And he was just, if you took Albert Einstein's brain and then combined that with the spirit of Bluto from Animal House, that was <laughs> Smitty. He's just a genius. Like Smitty was the one who figured out, he, you know, he figured out that, because uh, he was a pretty big guy, even, you know, in his early teens, he was close to six foot. So he figured out that, you know, come 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night on Halloween night, after all the trick-or-treaters are gone, if you just put on a big gorilla mask and went and ran some like Frank Sorry's doorbell and just breathed heavily, they would have to deal with that. This is before, I guess, they started shooting people. But anyway, the story I'm going to tell takes place. There was a, used to be an attraction out by, in Lancaster called Scream in the Dark when, when I was a teenager. And I went and looked it up. So I've got, there'll be a link. And people always go to the links for us because you, you can spend days in there being amused. There's a link in there called Remember Scream in the Dark. Here's nine facts about the granddaddy of Lancaster County Halloween attractions. And they confirmed in this what I remember about Scream in the Dark, which was it was ran by a church, which seemed really odd because I saw the most horrible shit go down there. I saw one time this young lady asked everybody around her if we could form a circle looking outward so she could drop her pants and pee. And she did. And it, here's, here's a you can see what went wrong right there the stream came and went downhill and I wasn't the unlucky one, but it was like Russian roulette. And they also had this, uh, um, this weird thing. You would sit, it was like a, uh, um, you know, when they drag race and have the lights that count down, you sit in these chairs and you would step when it got to green, you would step. If you went too early, you'd step on a uh, acceleration pedal type thing. And if you went too early, it would shock you. If you went too late, it would shock you. It took us about two seconds sitting there watching them bring people up to figure out, wait a minute, all we got to do is just, the minute it starts, stand up out of the chair, step on the thing, and it'll shock the hell out of the other person. <laughs> <laughs> then, so, yeah, we, we used to enjoy that. But here's the story. So we're at Scream in the Dark, 
and we're teenagers. We've smuggled beer. We've been drinking the whole way. And we get in and we're going through and it's, it's totally dark in one section. And my friend Smitty, who's a you know, big guy, strong guy, is, is, and he's a teenager, is, is going through and he's hitting the walls, you know, the way you would feel through. And it's, it's, his hand goes through the wall, punches through the wall, and he realizes, wait a minute, this is all like drywall. And he has an epiphany. So he lets everybody go past and he holds me and his brother back and we work, look, work as lookouts. And he starts punching huge holes in the wall and ripping out. So eventually he makes an entrance that looks like a cave entrance that's about <laughs> six feet high and four feet wide. And then when the next group of people comes through, he starts playing tour guide. And he starts going, in through here, in through here. And I, uh, for all I know, those people were like still in the wall somewhere. <laughs> they and to this day, when I see teenagers acting like idiots, I, I start to think, oh, that, and I think, wait a minute, what, what was one of the things you, because I imagine that, you know, who knows what was between those walls, but I'm going to read, this is the, uh, the last line from the thing about Scream in the Dark, and this may explain a lot here. In 1983, Scream in the Dark was canceled permanently. After well over a decade of scaring locals and visitors alike, the attraction was closed for good in 1983. Over the previous years, an increasing, of num an increasing number of problems with guests who were drunk and or disorderly caused Youth for Christ officials to shut down Scream in the Dark, citing fears that visitors or volunteer staff might get hurt. So I think, yeah, it was, but the thing is, I, I, to this day, I shouldn't laugh at it. I shouldn't, but I can't think of Smitty in that. And, 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 and again, maybe the reason I hold Halloween so sacred, we'll put up his obituary and his obituary. It actually says um, Halloween was his favorite holiday. And it was from the time he was a kid uh, until his death, he loved Halloween. And uh, every Halloween I do a little toast for Smitty and I really do. I, I miss him and I made it through that without crying. So yeah. Hey, I don't have that many good Halloween stories, but I'll tell one anyway. Maybe we can edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> this happened in 2016 on Halloween. I had just moved to Conchahawk, and so I was kind of new to the neighborhood. I decided I wanted to hand out candy. I, at CVS, I bought like a $9 bag of the mixed, like different variety pack of the <laughs> Laffy Taffy nerds, stuff I like, not the chocolate stuff, uh, sweet tarts. It was like huge. And I also bought, because I know people like chocolate too, a similar variety of Reese's, the Hershey's one. Um, and instead of making little bags like other people might do, I, I just poured every, there was, Already in the house, they had a huge ja plastic ja jack o not a plastic one, a glass jack-o-lantern. So I put everything in that, like a container, and w turned on my light like you're supposed to do. And we had a cat named Bob back then who'd always sit on a uh, recliner <laughs> on the porch. And it actually looked kind of spooky with the light on and the cat. And... One by little by little, I, kids would come up and I would say, take whatever candy you want. Okay, Rodney's gone. No, no, I'm showing the cat. On, I'm getting a visual aid. There's a cat. Oh, yeah. There's, cat. It's, it's like that, except it's like a, a stuffed recliner that you really shouldn't have on a porch. But that doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> some kids would say, oh, is that a real cat? See, yeah, it's a real cat. It likes kids. You can touch it if you want. Because it was, anyway. I would let the kids pick, pick whatever they want, as many, as much candy as they want, whichever candy they wanted. And with each set of trick-or-treaters, I would eat a candy myself, like a, a box of nerves or a sweet tart thing. And I did this, I don't know, 15 or 16 times. And then <laughs> I started feeling dizzy <laughs> and I almost thought I was going to faint. And then I realized I'm going to puke. So I ran <laughs> into the house. I made it to the kitchen sink. And I just puked. <laughs> like I have I a heard. question. What? what? Okay, now this puke, you had eaten all this bright multicolored candy. <laughs> was it like psychedelic puke? Was it, it was like the beginning of Ultraman where they have that? I don't know. I just felt so bad. I just felt horrible. I couldn't go. I couldn't. <laughs> so I just put the, I just let the jack-o'-lantern outside and it was self-serve for everybody else. 
<laughs> when I finally had the energy to go back, there was no candy anymore. So it served <laughs> <the purpose. laughs> That may have been like one <clears throat> or two kids just dumped it in their bags. Right. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, candy. I don't really care. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I, uh, I have a lot of Halloween stories. There's one I thought of in particular was like one of the first years I stopped doing the trick-or-treating. And I, I remember thinking like, oh man, maybe I should ask my friends if we should do it. But instead <clears throat> we decided to do like a, like a scary house thing. So for kids. Um, so my friend uh, Keith actually happened to have um, a coffin. <laughs> Uh, incidentally, he ended up in the coffin within two or three years after that. But uh, before that, we uh, we took turns. You know, we were dressed up in whatever we were. I think I had like a suit, like a dirty suit or something, and <clears throat> makeup to look like I was dead. And like laid in the casket, we had candy on us. So like the one one of the other guys would like not say anything and like lift it up, and the kids would like grab the candy out. And then, you know, we would be like, ah, or whatever. But like, when it was my turn, like the, there was all these kids <clears throat> and one of the last kids, like I, I totally did like for a long time, I was there and they were like, is he, is he really alive? And like poking me and stuff. And then they were about to leave. And I totally did like a screaming Jay Hawkins kind of like <laughs> thing. And one kid <laughs> screamed and started crying and then, and he just screamed. <laughs> He was wearing like a like a, a white like bunny costume or something, and there was like a yellow spot where he like peed his pants, and I was like, I felt so bad. <laughs> and you know, it's funny to think about. Oh I just God. realized like this was like let's see, this was probably like nineteen ninety three or ninety four, and that kid was probably five or six years old, so he's probably in his like thirties now. He's never heard he's the end. Traumatized his whole life. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, you know what? I that. actually, I had mixed feelings because I felt, you know, a little badly that this kid, you know, peed his Halloween costume. But I, I was also like, man, I must have scared him. <laughs> it's a good job, Dan. Smitty would have laughed. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere he's laughing at that. Yeah. <laughs> I laughed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I guess we're going to move on to recommendations now. Okay. So my recommendation this week is for a YouTube video, and it's a YouTube video entitled Crossroads Guitar Battle Between Butthole Surfers Paul Leary versus Steve Vai. <laughs> so there was a movie that came out in 1986 called Crossroads, starring Ralph Macchio. <laughs> and actually, uh, I, I haven't seen the movie, but I plan on watching it. Maybe maybe it's a bad idea, Rodney. Bad idea. It is not a good film at all. Okay. The only um, best line, the only good line in the film is, "Where did you learn those pussy chords?" <laughs> 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 My friends and I occasionally will yeah, we say, "Where did you learn those?" So, pussy according <laughs> to the according to the Wikipedia entry about the food, uh, film, Steve I actually I guess is in the movie as the yeah. devil's guitar player. Yes, he is. Yeah. But anyway, somebody has created a very humorous, uh, funny edit using footage from the movie with Paul Leary from the Butthole Surfers and Steve Vai. It's just it's like, it's priceless. You got to watch it. So that's my recommendation. It's only about like three or four minutes long. It's, it's, it's a good laugh. You'll, you'll, you'll be happier after you've watched it. This is why you always want to go to our links, people. So, all right. So uh, my recommendation in my constant search for, um, for scary music to listen to around Halloween, I've actually found a band from Philadelphia. Um, this is a band called Seventh Victim. I, I knew nothing about them. Um, yeah, I, I had not heard anything about them. Um, they're basically, they're, they're super scary. They have songs with titles like uh, Her Name is Witch, Missing Girls in Gothic Garb. Um, and, and they follow that. They're like the improperly medicated Eurythmics. They follow that, that pretty synth duo thing where you have you know, a female vocalist and a very quiet, shy, sophisticated second bloke back on the synth. Uh, so they actually, uh, it'll be tonight our time at midnight but for you folks watching this on saturday it would have been friday but they have a new single out it is a cover of an irish murder ballad so it's perfect for halloween called wheela wheela walia uh which is about basically i want to spoil it but 
a child gets murdered. And this is something kids would sing out on the playground. So yeah, that is, uh, um, they're called Seventh Victim. And uh, um, yeah, I was, I was just amazed to stumble upon them that that could exist here in Philadelphia. Um, now, the other thing I'm recommending is another staple of Philadelphia life, Dracula's Ball. Um, I mentioned it earlier. Uh, it's been going on for maybe close to 25 years. Uh, Patrick Rogers, who was a guest on this show, I was on here talking about his, uh, uh, his book, Even Goblins Get the Blues and, and, uh, um, and all of his other adventures. Um, he's been running that for years and years and years. Of course, if you live in Philadelphia, you might be asking, wait a minute, I moved down here from Brooklyn five years ago and I've never heard of it. That's the idea. Uh, local, mu mu uh, local music press has ignored the hell out of it, which is not cool. Um, but it is, um, this year, it's going to have Crystal Method, going to want to see them, and also Stoneburner, which marks the 726th mention on this show of our <laughs> friend Stephen Archer. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to be great. Uh, they're they're going to hold it at the Underground Arts this year. I used to always hold it at the Trocadero. I would go every year, and I would leave with a story. I mean, the most incredible stories. Um, this is this is one of those things, it's like terror behind the walls. It's like going to the Muter Museum. It's a Philadelphia sort of rite of passage. All Philadelphians should go at least once. And again, it's not going to, it doesn't get covered by the local press, sadly, but it's been going on forever. Usually packs a good big crowd and it's a really good time. So if you can, please attend Dracula's Ball this year. Thank you. I'd like to recommend uh, a documentary in two parts as part of the American Experience series called Citizen Hearst. Um, it's about William, William Randolph Hearst, um, who owned a media empire of like 28 newspapers, a movie studio, and radio stations, magazines. And it's interesting. It's, it's, a uh, It'll set you about set you back about four hours if you watch it, two hours each episode. But it's on PBS streaming. Um, it he's we William Hurst is the person that citizen, the movie Citizen Kane is uh, somewhat loosely based upon, and I think they did a pretty good job of explaining him. Except in William Randolph Hearst's life, Rosebud wasn't a sled. <laughs> Those of you who know what Rose Blood was or was or are smiling yourselves now, email me. I'll tell you. You know, the movie was like panned for years. It, well, it disappeared. William well, Randolph Hearst made it disappear. Well, they explain that. They explain that in the documentary, actually. Yeah. And it wasn't until it popped up on TV after he died that people were like, oh, my God, this thing is... They started showing it in, like, film schools in the late 60s, I think. And people started to say, wow, this is actually pretty good. And oh. it does all these, like, film noir and, like, German expressionists and all these, like, different styles of film were all in this one. Uh, uh, there's I, this great uh, document. There's a film about it called RKO 735 or something like that that is really, really good that lays down the whole story. Yeah. And it's not documentary. Uh, What's the Hollywood film that came out a couple of years ago um, about the writer? Ben Mankiewicz? Yeah, 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 yeah. The Mank. It's not, called not, Mank. Well, no, yeah. Ben Mankiewicz is the son. Uh, I think yeah, that's Herman part Mank? of it. I, I, I just know RKO, like, 735 yeah. or whatever The that movie was. Mank is really good. I highly recommend that if you can check it out. Yeah. Um, I, I recommend... Uh, I, I just got this recently. It's called... It's a, the night sky guide and it has each of the se seasons you know you know the season this is too dark for you to see but it it had once once you figure out how it's oriented it's really cool and is i it would glow recommend in the dark? <clears throat> what is it glow in the dark no but i would recommend as it does here to use like a light like a red light and it's cool because it's like a map kind of thing and it's laminated it's dew proof Rocks, Dan, you don't have to put on the red light. I'm so Those tired of my over. star maps getting ruined by do. <clears throat> but um, I also I also came across randomly came across like an Instagram page, which was really strange that I've been really kind of addicted to. Uh, it's these weird videos with like just random music um, mediations or something. I don't know. I'll, we'll put a, a link to it. Uh, you guys should check it out. It's kind of creepy stuff. Great. 
I always yeah. think of my relationship with Joe, like Charles Foster Kane and Jake Geddes in, in that film, where I just run around screaming a lot and, and, and he just looks at me disapprovingly. <laughs> <laughs>